is the Wireless Institute of Australia with the weekly news service. This broadcast is in text, audio and video and is accessed on wia.org.au. I'm Graham, VK4BB. Walk softly. Well, I hope that satisfies the people that last week dropped me a note to say, hey Graham, you didn't sign off the news. Well, let me tell you, we had 47 minutes of news last week that we managed to get down into 31 minutes. Yep, even I hit the cutting room floor. But that's not going to happen this week, says he confidently. In the news, we've got a double dose of WIA's Roger Harrison. We've got Peter Clee, the WIA secretary. And we've got Angelo, WIA's club coordinator. Yep, as I said, it's Graham VK4BB. Hi, everyone. This is Angelo VK2NWT, WIA affiliated clubs coordinator. As we approach the end of this year, most clubs will have conducted their respective annual general meeting by now or are about to do so. If your club has had a change of committee members this year or your club's contact details have changed for any reason, then please ensure that your club's WIA webpage has been updated to reflect those changes. The WIA really needs to have the correct contact details to ensure that we are contacting the right person in your club and that you receive correspondence from us in a timely manner. Obviously, it's also very important that the details are correct in order for potential new entrants to the amateur world to get in touch with your club. By the way, if there are additional features that your club feels should be added to your WIA webpage, then please feel free to forward your suggestions to me for consideration. As always, if you need any assistance with logging in or making updates to your webpage, please don't hesitate to contact me via email at vk 2 nwt at wia.org.au. This has been Angelo, VK2NWT for VK1WIA News. Listeners will most certainly recall that in March 2021, the WIA sought feedback on the Australian Communications and Media Authority's consultation paper, which was titled A Review of Non-Assigned Amateur and Outpost Regulatory Arrangements. The ACMA nominated only three options for consideration, on which they stated they preferred option C. The three options put forward by the ACMA were option A, keep, to keep the existing apparatus licensing arrangements and license conditions, option B, to simplify the current licensing arrangements and license conditions by amending the current amateur LCDs, and option C was to transition to class licensing arrangements for non-assigned amateur stations the operation of assigned amateur stations would continue to be authorised under apparatus licensing. The WIA poll received 1,690 individual responses. 84% of respondents favoured option A, 9% of respondents favoured option B, and only 7% favoured option C. There is no doubt that the ACMA are setting the scene for what appears to be the introduction of class licensing despite sector concerns. The ACMA have never hidden their wish for a single amateur radio certification level. A class licence would most certainly be a step in this direction. The ACMA has already transitioned the outpost licensing to a class licence. The outpost class licence did away with call signs and equipment licensing. This would be a poor outcome if it was applied to the amateur service. A class licence would see the removal of individual station licences and be replaced by apparatus licences. It may well see the removal of the RRL licence database. Without a station licence, it is hard to see how we would be able to have reciprocal licensing when we travel or move internationally. It may even be difficult to prove our amateur status if we are pulled over by police for operating a mobile radio. It would also limit our ability to deal with complaints about RFI as the ACMA want the amateur service to be self-regulating. This has not worked well in the Citizens Band radio service. The WIA Spectrum Committee went on to explore options with the regulator that could deliver benefits to both the amateur service and the ACMA. In September of this year, the ACMA released a comprehensive consultation paper for a proposed amateur class licence and consideration of higher power. 
The Spectrum Committee are currently drafting the WIA response to that paper. We are being enticed by the possibility of nil licence fees and increased power. However, increased power is a separate and unrelated issue to class licensing. They are not one and the same and are not a guaranteed outcome. The WIA will be publishing our draft response paper and are looking for feedback by way of a survey. All Wireless Institute of Australian members will receive the survey link by email. Non-WIA members are invited to register their interest in contributing to this survey. Non-WIA members can register your interest in participating by sending an email to register at wia.org.au with only your amateur call sign in the subject line. Individuals and shortwave listeners with no call sign will need to put their full name in the subject line of the email. WIA members do not need to register. Cheers for now. This has been WIA Director Peter, VK8ZZ. This is Editor-in-Chief of Amateur Radio Magazine, Roger Harrison, VK2ZRH. Last Tuesday, the files for the latest edition of AR, issue number 6 for 2022, the last for the year, were uploaded to the printer's server in Bairnsdale, Victoria. On Wednesday, the magazine's guts rolled off the press to be folded into the waiting arms of the glossy, heavier weight cover that was printed the week before. Look out for the issue landing in your letterbox, your post office box or your local news agency late next week. You'll recognise it easily because splashed across the front cover is the bold Vigora, class licence ready or not. And we've done something not done with AR Magazine since December 1964. We have a cartoon on the front cover. The theme for this issue is Contest Capers, hence the centre pages of the magazine comprise a lift-out calendar of VK and popular contests for 2023. Pages 34 and 35 are the centre sheet of the magazine. You can readily ease it out and post it to the notice board in your shack, on the door of your fridge or anywhere at hand. In the contest capers pages, you'll find details on the 2023 Australia Day contest rules, a rundown on using digital modes of FT4 and FT8 in contesting, a feature article from our colleague Flapjaw Knopflock that asks the question, what is a contest? And a very handy contester's checklist from the indefatigable Diane Main, VK 4DI, plus rules for the upcoming 2023 Ross Hole and John Moore contests. Other features in the issue include news on what's happening with Solar Cycle 25, which seem to be rising fast and might be bigger than expected. The WIA returning officer, John Marshall, has a call for nominations for the election of directors to the board. Don't miss it. It's on page 9. If you're confounded by coils, then you'll be pleased to read a couple of clarifying articles by Dale Hughes, VK1DSH. They precede part 1 of a two-part article of his describing a multi-mode transmitter for the 2200 metre band, featuring a Class E final. And that's not all. There's so much more to Issue 6. It's worth the wait. Amateur Radio Magazine, Volume 90, Issue Number 6 for 2022, serving Australian radio amateurs since 1933. Available in print and online. Always published to a schedule, never random. This has been AR Magazine, Editor-in-Chief, Roger Harrison, VK, 2ZRH, for VK1 WIA News. This is the home service of the Wireless Institute of Australia through VK1 WIA. Now, international news with Jason, VK2 LAW. Yes, and our international news is thanks to IARU, RSGB, RAC, ARRL, NZART, EHAM, SARL, Amateur Radio Newsline, Radio World and the worldwide sources of the WIA. Leading this week's international news from Region 1, Germany's proposed new N-Class entry-level licence could be in place as early as January the 1st of 2023. 
the possible addition is being reviewed by the German regulator as a way to add a third licence class to the existing E, novice and A, full licence classes. A change in the regulations would give N-class operators call signs with the prefix Delta November and the current Delta November call signs, which are only used for training purposes under supervision of a licensed ham, would be cancelled on December 31st of this year to be replaced by the use of a Delta November prefix. Most of us will have experienced RF interference problems of one sort or another over the years. Many will have noticed that the incidence and intensity has increased. In this world of advanced digital technology and increasing wireless connectivity, the probability of interference is high and increasing rapidly. Enter the RSGB. They say this is giving rise to an ever-increasing pollution of the radio spectrum, which is threatening all wireless communication. To counter these problems, RSGB need to make the relevant authorities aware by taking measurements and surveying any available documents and reports. They are looking for volunteers who can help with this work. In news from Region 2, delegates attend IARU Region 2 General Assembly. The Triennial General Assembly is the formal decision-making body of IARU Region 2 comprising the Americas, and delegates are the representatives of each member society. The president of IARU Region 2 is Ramon Santoyo, X-Ray Echo 1 Kilo Kilo. At the meetings, the delegates reviewed challenges to amateur radio, debated proposals from member societies, and received reports from coordinators and elected volunteers. The Guayaquil Radio Club was selected to host the next General Assembly in 2025 in Ecuador. 26 member societies are represented with 117 registered attendees from across Region 2, as well as representatives from Region 1, Europe, Africa, the Middle East and Northern Asia, Region 3, Asia Pacific and the IARU offices. A giant called Collins. The Titan Missile Museum, also known as Air Force Facility Missile Site 8, is a former ICBM site located outside Tucson, Arizona in the United States. It was constructed in 1963 and deactivated in 1984. Visitors journey through time to stand on the front line of the Cold War. An amazing place and a unique and equally amazing antenna that you can hook up to. Ham radio operators can broadcast and listen on the Discone antenna at the Titan Missile Museum. When the Titan ICBM site became operational, its communication system included a large broadband Discone antenna that is still standing today. Built by Collins Radio Company, the antenna is 80 feet tall and has a large crown, enabling it to radiate signals over a wide range of frequencies. If you're an amateur radio operator, you can use the antenna free of charge when the museum is open. Did AM radio just get hit by lightning? There's something missing from the newest F-150 lightning truck. In the USA, Ford has led the way in trucks for decades with the F-150, but manufacturing the electric version of this truck represents a major risk for the company and perhaps a turning point of the internal combustion engine. The new 2023 electric model of the F-150 has no AM radio. That's due to electrical interference to AM used in an EV. The 2022 F-150 Lightning had a whip antenna to facilitate AM reception. Now the Ford Brain Trust has apparently concluded it's not worth the expense for a radio platform that is facing the death spiral. And to our own backyard in news from Region 3, stunning solar flare causes radio blackouts in the South Pacific. A surprise solar flare has burst from an area of dense magnetism on the sun's surface, causing a temporary radio blackout in parts of Australia and all of New Zealand. The M5 class medium strength solar flare was recorded by NASA's Solar Dynamics Observatory as it erupted from the Sunspot AR3141 at 10.11am Eastern Standard Time on Monday, November 7. 
the flare created a rush of radiation that ionised Earth's atmosphere, according to spaceweather.com. Saturday's Women's Rugby World Cup final between the Black Ferns and England has had interest skyrocketing to such an extent over the past week that a world record attendance is assured at Eden Park. But not everyone has gone to see the defending world champions against the Red Roses. Enter RSM, ZL's equivalent of our ACMA. Behind the scenes, RSM teams are working alongside organisers and broadcasters to ensure the event is a success. Investigators are on site to help identify and resolve any potential radio spectrum issues that may arise. So far, RSM investigators have been busy dealing with interference on match days between the many different users of radio communication devices. This has been greatly assisted by the cooperation of all parties to resolve interference issues. For VK1WIA National News in Sydney, I'm Jason, VK2LAW. Thanks, Jason. Now, moving right along, it's book review time, and normally Nick pops in with the book review, but this week, here's John. The legacy of Charles Hellman, W2RP, continues. At the time Charlie became a silent key in 2017, the 106-year-old New York amateur was considered the oldest amateur in the U.S. and likely the longest licensed. Active almost right up to the year he died, Charlie amassed a collection of QSL cards that so many years later is now carrying a different message to the world, one about graphic design and communication between people. 150 cards in Charlie's collection, which were later purchased by a designer visiting a local antique shop, are now the subject of a soon-to-be-published book on typography and graphics. Its title? QSL, Do You Confirm Receipt of My Transmission? The collection's owner, Roger Bova, made the cards available to Standards Manual, an independent publisher that specialises in books about design history. The book features the simple, bold design of the card from RB0HZ, confirming a 1986 contact on 20 metres SSB. In contrast, there's a whimsical, cartoonish card from DM3EJ for a 1979 SSB contact on 10 metres. Many of the pages are full and rich and colourful. The cards are as much a study in design as in communication in the age before the internet took hold. They're presented in the book in chronological order. No doubt Charlie, a retired educator, might be pleased to know that he's still providing a means for people everywhere to expand their knowledge. This is John VK4JJW. This is the home service of the Wireless Institute of Australia through VK1WIA. Now, operational news with Felix, VK4FUQ. Hello there. Now Contest Wires 2022. Last week Shirley VK5YL reported on a special wire contest to take place next weekend, 18 and 19 of November on 1840 metres. Please check the webpage in this week's text edition. Best found on wia.org.au WIA VHF UHF Field Day, Spring. This is Roger Harrison, vk 2 zrh First World Manager of the VHF UHF Field Days. As contestants who submitted logs for the 2021 Spring VHF UHF Field Day already know, logs have been checked and the tables of results are published on the VHF UHF Field Days website. Heartfelt thanks go to Trent Sampson, VK4TS. Trent advises that work to process the 2022 Summer and Winter events is continuing. We also hope to publish the results of those events soon. As keen contestants will know, the 2022 Spring Contest will be held over Saturday 26th through Sunday 27th November, the weekend after next. While the rules are the same as for previous events, I have posted the written rules to the VHF UHF Field Days website to satisfy that part of me which is Irish. To be sure, to be sure. And Trent VK40S makes a plea. When creating your log, make sure that you include your call sign. Only then will we know whose log it is. As well as that, 
we encourage you to use VKCL, the VK Contest Logger. It has automated all the fiddly bits. Make your life easy. It makes it easy for us too. Get onto social media, as well as the well-known email lists frequented by VHF, UHF and microwave types, and publicise where you're going and the times you will be operating. Otherwise, you might be calling CQ in vain. Best wishes for the contest. Thanks, Roger. DX Window. Pilot selected for 2023 booby activation. As the time draws closer for the booby island activation, new members of the team are being put into place as pilots. These hams provide a critical role as intermediaries between the expedition team and the DX chasers. They will be keeping an eye on propagation in their designated parts of the world to help facilitate contacts. The chief pilot and pilot for Europe is Morden, LA3MHA. Hams and VKZLOC will have WA Vice President Lee, VK3GK, as pilot. The Booby team expects to activate from the sub-Antarctic island between January 13th and February 28th. This week I take a look at the various contacts you can make during the CQ WWCW contest taking place on November the 26th and 27th. They will include Henning, who will be on the air from Kosovo as Z68EE during the contest. A Slovenian team will also be active as TK0C in Corsica. Doug and Anthony will be operating from Grand Turk, call sign VP5Y. And listen up for call sign HQ9X from Winton Island, Honduras. IOTA number NA057 during the CQWWCW contest. GB1LJF begins its honour activities on Thursday the 1st of December. The special event station is operating to celebrate the manufacturing of the English Electric Lightning aircraft in Lancashire. The English Electric Lightning is a British fighter aircraft that served as an interceptor during the 1960s, 1970s and last flew in the UK in 1988. More information is available via the gb1ljfqrz.com page. BBC Centenary Special Event GB100 BBC Members of the BBC Radio Club, the London BBC Radio Group, have been on air all year with the Special Event call sign to help celebrate the BBC Centenary Year. GB100 BBC has been operating throughout the year from the headquarters station and broadcasting house, London. For VK1 WIA National News, I'm Felix VK for Review Q Inningham. Now, special interest group news with Cole, VK3GTV. Hello, first up, it's Summits on the Air, Worldwide Flora and Fauna Program, Parks on the Air and other adventure groups. Over time, we've made reference to POTA, Parks on the Air, so, how do you participate? General information about the program is available on parksontheair.com, so check out the information there as a start. Here in VK, the coordinator is Marty Nelson, VK4KC. You'll find a list of all the world's go-to people on that parksontheair.com site, and in the text edition this week, we also include their Facebook URL. Once you're ready to start, just remember that the golden rules of POTA are to have fun and keep it simple. They want to give us as much flexibility as possible to have fun your way. Getting started with POTA can happen via one of two paths, as an activator who heads out into the parks or as a hunter who is trying to contact someone in a park. The easiest way to participate in POTA is obviously as a hunter. As an activator, you can get to enjoy some breathtaking scenery lots of fresh air, and some exercise. Worldwide Special Interest Groups, CW. From the Shaky Isles comes Straight Key Night. The summer edition of Straight Key Night will be held Sunday the 4th of December from 9pm to 10pm on 80 metres. Neil, ZL1NZ, says SKN is not a contest, but it's a great chance to dust off that straight key and let us hear what it can do. New to CW? No problem. I'm told they'll happily match your speed. Worldwide Special Interest Group's Final Frontier. Hot from the Red Planet, NASA's MOXIE experiment on Perseverance 
has that generated ISIU oxygen successfully during many different times of the Martian day and year, producing about 6 grams of oxygen per hour, similar to the production rate of a medium-sized tree. NASA life support design requirements specify 35 grams of oxygen per hour for astronauts. From perseverance to insight and under layers of dust, NASA's Mars Inside Lander is fading, but the first and only seismometer on Mars had one parting gift for humanity. On May 4th, a magnitude 4.7 Mars quake, one of the largest detected on the Red Planet. InSight's detection of meteor impacts on Mars has been well documented. The significant impact spotted showed excavated boulder-sized chunks of ice buried closer to the Martian equator than ever found before. Finally, if we dare use that word with this story, Monday the 14th should see the highly anticipated, often delayed, launch of Artemis 1. However, NASA is working with U.S. Space Force and the National Hurricane Center to monitor subtropical storm Nicole. NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida is currently in Hurricane Condition 4 status, which includes implementing checklists and preparations for the storm as the agency continues to prioritize its employees in the Kennedy area. Based on forecast data, managers have determined the Space Launch System rocket and Orion will remain on Launch Pad 39B. Teams at Kennedy will continue to monitor the weather, make sure all personnel are safe, and will evaluate the status of the Monday, November 14 launch attempt for the Artemis 1 mission as they proceed and receive updated predictions about the weather. Once heavenly bound, amateur radio operators will join a powerful international network tracking NASA's Orion spacecraft as she flies to the moon. NASA officials announced that a network of 18 volunteers, organizations and space agencies will assist with tracking Artemis 1, which will send an uncrewed Orion spacecraft to orbit around the Moon after blasting off from Earth atop a space launch system rocket. The selected volunteers, including two individuals in the amateur radio world, will demonstrate whether they can receive Orion's signal and use their respective ground antennas to passively track and measure changes in the radio waves transmitted by Orion, NASA officials said in a statement. Worldwide Special Interest Group, Military. Commemorating Remembrance Day in Belgium, members of the UBA Section ARA, Active Radio Amateurs, are still active as OP22HWL until the 13th of November. The station is set up at the Klein Zwanhof Museum in Ypres, The special call sign is in memory of Harry Whitelock, killed in action in the Ypres salient of World War I, August 1917. This is VK1 WIA. All points of contacts from today's news stories are to be found in print when you read the web editions, www.wia.org.au. This is Andrew of VK3 CAH from the Southern Peninsula Amateur Radio Club. With a reminder that the Rosebud Radio Fest will be held this year on Sunday the 20th of November. In addition to sales of new and pre-loved equipment in the main hall, the Rosebud Radio Fest sets itself apart with the excellent range of forms which are presented. This year, topics being covered are Super Simple Pedestrian Mobile QRP DX this summer by Peter Parker of VK3YE. Locating of QRM sources by Bob Tate, VK3XP. A talk about a new digital mode, M17, by Tony Langdon, VK3JED. So come along and enjoy the equipment sales, great catering and excellent forums at the Rosebud Radio Fest. See you in Rosebud. This is Andrew, VK3CAH. Thanks, Andrew. Now, in 2023, in VK3 again, we've got the Barg Hamfest. That happens February the 5th at the Barg Club Rooms. And a big one happening right now. Yes, it's on now in northern VK2 and southeast VK4. Out at Parklands on the Gold Coast, it is the Gold Coast Hamfest. So now, until next we meet, I am Graham, VK4BB. Walk softly. From Australia, 
This has been the Wireless Institute of Australia with the weekly news service. This broadcast is in text, audio and video and is accessed on wia.org.au. Courtesy of Bevan, VK5, BD's ATV and YouTube channel, this has been WIA National News. We're back now, live and local, and your voice, your callbacks. And don't forget, tick like.